nature has worked for millions of years disposing of human remains. The animals, the bugs, the bacteria, the weather will break us down as it breaks down all the animals that have ever died. The earth will deal with us in a very gentle way, not involving chemicals, concrete, steel, heavy equipment, and that sort of business can make you feel a lot better about what is probably going to be the worst day of your life. You're listening to the Beyond the Obituary podcast from Renaissance Funeral Home and Crematory in Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm your host, Jason Gilligan. On today's episode, we talk all about Green Burial with Joe Smolinski and Heather Hill from Renaissance and Green Burial expert Ann Weston. Ann is the founder of the Green Burial Project, which seeks to educate the public about the benefits to families and the earth of a kinder way of death care. Renaissance offers Green Burial as one of the options, and both Joe and Heather are passionate about making all options available to their clients. And in this episode, you'll start to understand why this option is becoming more requested every day. Here's Ann Weston. Green Burial is burying bodies in as environmentally friendly way as possible. And there are three standards. One is no embalming. The second is no burial vaults. And the third is no impervious containers. Green burial grounds differ widely around the country and even in North Carolina. Some burial grounds will permit you a big honk and angel. As a memorial, other burial grounds will insist that you use a field stone gathered from the property. And a third option is very small metal markers with name, date, and GPS location so that the property, if needed, could be burned in a controlled burn for landscaping purposes. According to Renaissance's Joe Smolensky, because there's no embalming and no casket or vault, it's usually less expensive than the other options. Yeah, it is, and that's just a benefit, but that's not the purpose. I mean, I mean, maybe for some people it is, but if people are mostly concerned on, you know, about price, if normally they're going to just go with a cremation and, and that's it. But for people that have a desire to make their last impression on the world something that benefits the earth actually and doesn't doesn't hurt it in any way then that would be the person that wants green burial and the reason that we felt so strongly about it from the beginning my own life that's how i live my life is making decisions based on what's environmentally friendly being conscious of costs um costs in the sense of not being wasteful and protecting the earth and all these little details about my life make green burial fit perfectly with what I desire when I die. And so since that was what I wanted, I embraced it. I brought that upon the funeral home and the employees here and said, what do you guys think of this? And really Heather, she also embraced it and it's been embraced here by everybody from that point forward. And and we became known in North Carolina to be one of the most well-known funeral homes in North Carolina for supporting green burial. And so people come to us asking questions. We get emails from people all around, even outside of the state. And we take part in presentations and and expos and online discussions, um, even forums, uh, discussion forums in person about this topic all year long. With sitting with families, what's been the most transformative for me is a few instances, actually. I had a family whose her husband had suffered for a long time with cancer, and he had been through so many invasive procedures and so much chemicals in his body. And they had planned to do a traditional burial, or he was going into a mausoleum. And embalming is required if you're going on an indoor mausoleum. She didn't want him pumped with any more chemicals because he'd gone through so much chemo. And so that was a really tough decision sitting with that family and her children who wanted to honor his wishes, but she really wanted a green burial. She didn't want any more invasive 
actions to be taken against his body. That was a really unique experience. Another one is witnessing my first green burial or my first few green burials, the reactions that the visitors or the people that are there to pay respects, their reactions is, is amazing. This was beautiful. I didn't know you could do this. What a unique thing, a way to honor somebody. More of a gentle experience it is for the family and so much intimacy that you can have with a green burial from start to finish, from keeping your loved one at home to helping dress your loved one. You've taken care of that person for, you know, anywhere from 20 to 20 years to two weeks and you've washed their hair, you've bathed them, you've fed them. And at this time, when you're, you know, handing them over to us to take care of, letting us bring the family into that experience is, is really intimate. And, and to actually, I witnessed a green burial where the gentleman was sitting beside his partner with his hand on his heart during the whole service, the whole graveside service. There's no more intimacy and closeness that you can get from an experience like that. So I think the more people that see a green burial are part of a green burial and witness a green burial are themselves transformed into what a beautiful experience it can be. And the, the biggest shock is I didn't know you could do this. You could actually do this. They, they think it's illegal. The public thinks that embalming is required, and I've heard families come from other funeral homes saying that in order for me to see my loved one, they had to be embalmed, where with this, that's what we like to actually tell our families, that embalming is not required by law. Only if you're going out of the country do you need to actually be embalmed. You can transfer over state lines without embalming. So there's a general lack of understanding when it comes to green burial. Many of us have been indoctrinated into more traditional burials, and don't really consider being environmentally friendly or one with the earth. For Anne and the Green Burial Project, it's about education, and oftentimes she'll provide group consulting. I generally like to sit across a table with a lot of pieces of paper when I talk to people. Some of those pieces of paper have a bunch of facts, but what's more important is that we have a conversation about what people's needs are, and why they're interested in green burial. Is this a financial question? Is it an environmental question? Those are good reasons. But the point is that people are going to be asked to care for their loved one in a way that they may never have seen done. They are going to be asked to look at their loved one in a way that maybe they've not ever seen a person. They may never have seen a dead person unembalmed. They may never have touched one. We have to understand where people's ick factor is and deal with that in a gentle, respectful way. But we talk about most everything, what it's going to involve, where they might go for assistance. In the United States, funeral homes will provide services a la carte which means that you don't have to consider working with a funeral home as an all-or-nothing business transaction. Very few funeral homes, to my understanding, would deny you a la carte services. Number one, it would be illegal, but most funeral homes would prefer to have a bit of something rather than all of nothing. So you may also decide that you don't want your loved one at home. That may be really high on your ick factor. We are not having dead people in my house. The funeral home could offer you storage. They could offer you cold storage. But on the other hand, if your family was amenable, they could do all of those things at home, and you'd have the benefit of what Heather called intimacy, with the deceased in the house to be talked to offered loving services, a kiss on the forehead before you go to bed, perhaps, things that you couldn't do if you had just called the funeral home in the middle of the night and they had taken your family member away for you to see only on a certain schedule that would probably operate during business hours. And our love doesn't always need its expression during business hours. So I would offer people the notion that they can get help when they need it, we would talk about the very few locations in our area where you could get buried green, which in this case means without a vault. The vault is generally the sticking place. 
And cemeterians will tell you that the purpose for a vault is to facilitate the grass cutting. And that is the only purpose for the vault in our area. Some communities need vaults because the water table is very high and in floods, coffins that are not secured in vaults may rise to the surface and float down the stream. That's not generally the case in our area. And vaults then are a very large expenditure in resources, concrete and steel, and in money. And if you don't need it, why use it? But finding the cemetery that will accommodate you may be more difficult than any of the other things that you will be asked to do for a green burial. Just think about it this way. You either know that's what you want and you pre-plan for it and you already have your property or you've already worked out the zoning rules in your area, or people come in and they don't know that it's an option. Or even when we're talking to somebody on the phone, we'll say, are you looking at cremation, burial, green burial, or even body donation? It either comes to them pre-planning or not pre-planning. The pre-planning folks usually have their cemetery plots already bought, or they're going to look at them as they're pre-planning their funeral. This is not a new way of burying our dead. This is, you know, new to this generation and our parents' generation. So sometimes bringing it up in a certain way is a unique talent, I think, that you have to have. And so by offering for their own property, most people, that is not an overwhelming request that we get. You know, sometimes an offhanded remark will say, oh, you could, you know, if you live outside the city limits, you know, you could bury on your own property. And most of the time that's shut down right away. But by bringing it up, I'm at least piquing their interest, kind of like green burial. There may be a family that's in here and their parent has passed away while I'm showing them the traditional choices that their parent may have chosen around the corners, our green burial section. And they'll look over there and say, what is that, that pine casket or what is that shroud? So we're educating their children on choices. And I don't know how many times I've sat down with someone and they said, well, this is what mom, we're going to do for mom because this was in her, in her choice and this is what she wants to do. But this is what I really like. When I start a talk, I hand out a little piece of paper for a quiz. And this is not a group group. It's a personal quiz. People are not asked to share with anybody. It's their own piece of paper to keep them honest during the conversation that we will have during the hour. And the three words on the piece of paper are plan, write, tell. And they are all yes, no questions. And I ask people to be honest with themselves. The first is plan. Do you have a plan for the disposition of your body upon your death? Write. Have you written that plan down? Yes or no? And the third is tell. Have you told the people about your plan? the people who are going to execute that plan, because obviously you are not getting yourself down to the green burial ground. At the end of my talks, after we talk about costs and environmental costs, financial costs, emotional costs, and how we can mitigate those costs and bring ourselves back to a way of burial that is in keeping with our traditions, I ask people, to consider their next steps. And the next steps include making a plan, finding out as much about green burial as they can if this is something that they're interested in. If they're not interested in green burial, they need to find out what they are interested in and make that plan. The second part of this is to write that plan down and put it in a place where it can be found. This means it is not going into your will because the will is generally not read until sometime after the funeral, and it means not putting the plan in the safety deposit box, which may be locked up in perpetuity if somebody doesn't have the key. And making sure that the people who are going to execute that plan know about the plan, know what arrangements you have already made, and are agreeable to what your wishes are. If the people who are going to execute this have some notion that green burial is disrespectful in some way because it does not include a shiny coffin with brass handles or because you may want to have this done in your home rather than a funeral home or at a church, then you need somebody else to execute that plan. 
and unless other arrangements are made, whoever is listed as your health care power of attorney in your final documents and advanced directives will be the person executing that plan. My experience is that older people not only have plans, they've paid for them. Younger people always put this off. Oh, there's no need for this. Younger people will also not talk to their parents about their plans because, oh, that's just too morbid. I encourage older adults who have adult children to make their kids an offer at Thanksgiving when they come for the meal. They can either talk about your death plans and arrangements, or they can talk about politics, one or the other. <laughs> generally, generally, people pick death. When people are choosing this, let's say that they, they walk in, it's the first they're hearing about it, and they really want to do it, or we're talking on the phone as I've had this happen to me. What will other people think? What if I'm not in the casket with the brass handles? What if I'm in a pine box? Because the reactions that people get when they see the pine box are either end of the spectrum. It's beautiful. Look at the craftsmanship of that. Look how simple it is. My, my dad was a simple man or my dad worked with wood. He would really appreciate this. Or it's at the other end where there's no way that I would let my community see that I put my husband or my wife in a pine box, which... I don't think it's right because I have I had a family that really wanted a green burial, but she had older relatives in upstate New York that would not approve of this, although it's something she really wanted. I really felt for her because she really wanted to go with the green choice, and she only didn't do it because of what people might have thought, which if she only knew that once people come and they see the beauty and the intimacy, there's my word again, of this, it, it is really a beautiful choice. There, you're not going to change everybody's mind. There may be some people that come to a green burial and walk away and say, I, I couldn't do that. Nobody's ever expressed that to me. But I, I think that's a sad state of affairs when we're choosing our funeral choices for our loved one because of what other people might think. It is very, it is there. And that is something that people really, really toil with, with is that choice. But I have done green burial with a traditional Catholic funeral. We took the pine box to the Catholic Church, and I've taken it, taken the pine box or the pine casket to St. Francis before here in Raleigh. The preachers have commented that it's very Franciscan, mm. that they're doing this, that the simplicity of it is, is really beautiful. So I think we need to change our mindset into thinking just because it's not a shiny metal casket that it's not beautiful. There is a simplistic beauty in a pine casket. So with this Catholic funeral that we did, the casket was draped in the pall, and then we went to her own property. And we had paint buckets, paint trays, and the kids took their fingerprints and their handprints and marked the casket oh, with wow. their own. And she was worried about his parents that were the traditional Catholics. And I have a picture of them actually doing the, the handprints on the casket afterwards. And it was a beautiful. So we went from a traditional Catholic service, and then we went to her home and, and continued with a beautiful tradition the priest was there to bless the grounds with holy water, and it was a beautiful service. So we are able to combine, you know, I think a lot of people think green burial, oh, you have to be, you know, a Buddhist or, you know, not have religion in order to do this. But I think that's just, that's not fair to say. I don't, I don't want it to have that stigmatism because you can still have, I've done many Catholic funerals at, at a green burial. So you can combine the two. And I think if, your wishes are what's most important and your family's wishes are what's most important. I don't care what you're, you know, you shouldn't care so much about your relatives and what they might say because you might just change their mind. I'd like also to point out that Jews have been burying green and Muslims have been burying green since the beginning of their tribes in the Middle East. Today, they bury in shrouds or simple boxes that will decay, they bury without vaults, in order for the body to return to the soil and the earth as quickly as possible. I think it's taking Christians a little while to catch up, but this is not news to our Muslim and Jewish friends. So there are a lot of reasons for green burial, but because it's not what we're used to, it might seem elaborate or difficult. Here's Joe. The green burial is, is very simple. It may sound it if, I don't know if people are listening to this thing, oh, that sounds kind of complicated. It's not at all. It is an experience. It's a, it's simple and we will make it simple. And it is an experience that 
the traditional funeral could not offer and cremation only doesn't offer at all. Aside from all the other great advantages of doing it for the environment and the cost is less, but it's a, it's a really warming experience. And we see it for each family that we do this with. It's awesome. That's the only thing I could say. Can I add, though, that the people that choose Green Burial do not choose it for the money aspect. And I have yet to wait on a family that say, well, let me choose Green Burial because it's cheaper. Thankfully, I've never seen that. Some people, as they're thinking of doing it, they're thinking of doing it for other reasons. And then they're like, oh, and I don't have to buy a vault or I'm not paying for embalming. But people are not coming their first choice to do this just because of cost. One of those reasons is the environmental impact. Here's Anne on the cost of both traditional burials and cremations on the environment. Well, I think one thing that is just on the surface is the use of formaldehyde and other chemicals in the embalming process. We use approximately 800,000 gallons of formaldehyde and bury it annually. The people who manufacture it, handle it, work in waste disposal, the embalmers themselves all have significant levels of ALS and multiple myeloma. Not to mention what it's doing to the earth itself, but just the people who manufacture it and use it. Does it in some way help the family? Maybe. Does it in some way harm the environment and the people who use it? Absolutely. So if you don't need it, why would you use it? And if a funeral director has told you that embalming is required in order to have a viewing in their facility, that is a rule that they made up. That is not a law. You can have a viewing without embalming at any place. It is not required. That's one of the biggest surprises. We use an awful lot of bronze and copper and steel in our coffins. We use 30 million board feet of oak, maple, and cherry annually. In terms of vaults, we're burying 1.6 million tons of vault concrete. And again, who is this helping? It's the guy who's mowing the grass. And in terms of cremation fuel, Cremation has for a long time been the better environmental choice, but it no longer is. And we are putting an awful lot of heavy metals up the chimneys where there are older retorts that do not have chimney scrubbers and filters. And it uses a fair bit of natural gas or some other fuel to burn the bodies. Nature has worked for millions of years disposing of human remains. It's why we do not see people and their corpses in forest places that are virgin forests and people might have died, say, a thousand years ago. They're just not there because the earth takes care of it. The animals, the bugs, the bacteria, the weather will break us down as it breaks down all the animals that have ever died. It's not an incredibly difficult concept to understand, the earth will deal with us in a very gentle way and not involving chemicals, concrete, steel, heavy equipment, and that sort of business can make you feel a lot better about what is probably going to be the worst day of your life. So before we go, Joe discussed some of the reasons people wouldn't choose green burial besides what Anne called the ick factor. Normally, it's an argument against burial, period. Not really just specifically green burial, but burial in general, in some people's mind, is taking up a footprint in the ground. So you're taking up space, which people don't want to do. They would like to be maybe with cremation. You have the advantage of having many, probably a 100 different options of where those cremains could potentially go. And green burial or burial just doesn't offer that. It's one spot. My argument back is, well, if you're buried in a in a cemetery, that's what what is the label? Conservation conservation cemetery, which we have one in this area, and we have that ability 
to be buried there where this space would be reserved in perpetuity for green burial, you're actually preserving that natural area for nature undisturbed forever. So you're actually taking part in, in a greater aspect than just simply reserving your space. You're helping to protect that whole area. And I don't know if people realize that, but that is one huge reason to have a green burial. We respect everybody's choices. If you want your family member to be embalmed and be in a casket and be in a sealed vault in a cemetery, and that is your choice and that helps you grieve, please know there's no judgment because we advocate for green burial. If that's your choice and that's what you want to do, then then that is your choice. And we will honor that choice. We have a lot of traditional funerals that we do here. Just because we advocate for green burial doesn't mean that we think that traditional burial is wrong. We see a trend that traditional burials are, are decreasing, and that's because of all these reasons. But if that's what you want to do, then that is what you should do. If you chose cremation, which more than 50% of people in the United States choose cremation, and that's how you choose to grieve. I just talked to my mom this weekend about green burial because that's what I'm choosing. Please do not do a green burial on me. I don't like the idea of decomposing in the soil. That is not how I want to do. I want to go to ashes as quickly as possible. That is her choice and that it will be respected and there's no judgment. If you choose green burial, then we will assist you in that as well. I just always like to say that there's no right or wrong. Green burial is another option. And while we think it's an amazing choice and it's the intimacy and, the, and what we're doing for the environment, eventually traditional burials are going to decrease once you know our generations change then that will take on its own. But I just want people to know that the option is yours to choose no matter what you choose, and that is right for you. And let me just say that the point here is to plan, to know what your options are and choose them. Don't let the choice for your final disposition be made by circumstance, emergency, or any other reason that doesn't fit with your world. Pick it because you know what it is and you want it. Then write it down and tell the people who are going to execute your plan. That was Ann Weston, Joe Smolinski, and Heather Hill. You can find more information on the Green Burial Project by going to greenburialproject.org and we'll include that link in the show notes. Also, if you'd like to connect with Renaissance Funeral Home, visit rfhr.com or email podcast at rfhr.com. This podcast is a production of Earfluence. Thanks for listening, everyone, and we'll see you next time on Beyond the Obituary.